Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Roberta Ridley, Chairwoman of the African American Genealogical Society of Fort Wayne. And again, I thank you for joining the program today, which is researching your roots. Uh, and we're gonna, and the value of knowing your roots and how that helps you to discover who you are. Okay, we're going to be discussing um, the basics of learning uh, how to do genealogical research. And we're gonna not waste a lot of time because all of you know why you're here for the most part. And I'm gonna kick this off uh, with the value of actually knowing your roots and how that helps you to discover who you are. Uh, as a chairwoman of the African-American Genealogical Society, my venture into genealogy certainly did start with me doing my own family research uh, many, many years ago, and then uh, having the pleasure and the honor of being employed at the Allen County Public Library, starting off in the genealogy department. And uh, it was a opportunity beyond my understanding at the very beginning. And what it ended up being is here where we are today. I would like for all of you to sort of take a moment before we start this venture and think, it's very important that you think genealogically as we move forward. I call it being in a genealogy state of mind. A genealogy state of mind is a little bit different than you sitting down to do your math problem or um, any other type of academic thing that you would go after, but you should um, think of it as a, a homework mission. You wanna do it and you wanna do it right. So I like to encourage people, or I have always encouraged people to put on that cap that allows you to think about who you are, what has all come together to make you the individual that you are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It all comes together to have you sitting there, listening to what we're about to share and wondering about the various things that you have wondered about throughout your life, how long your legs are, why your hair turned gray early, uh, why you like farming so much, but you've never been on a farm. Uh, there are a lot of little things that come to mind that help us understand. How did you end up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, if that's where you are, or for that matter, where you're living today? Was it a migration route that derives from your heritage or was it just some career fluke? But all the same, you wanna understand where you come from. And that is the idea of us doing genealogy research. You're going to, um, experience a lot of things. If you haven't, if this is your first time out, discovering who you are is about discovering your ancestors and being able to put together the story. And you want to understand everything about it and to know what records are available out there. But each one of us are the sum total of the ancestors that came before us. Doing the genealogy research, of course, helps you to understand the ancestors and what and how they contributed to your being, and perhaps even the lack of. So we're gonna talk about records that are available to you and how you are going to um, get to those records to find out whatever it is that you can find out. We're going to discover uh, records that are both United States and out of the United States records that are more primary in certain areas. I understand that within this uh, attendance group that we have some individuals who are also looking at international records that may be available. And we're gonna talk about those as well. Um, some of the things that will be shared um, to get into that will be the collections that are being provided from Mexico and from the Caribbean and international and international records that are out there as well. You are blessed to be I have this coming to you uh, from the um, Allen County Public Library collection, Allen County Public Library being the so-called second largest genealogy uh, library in the country. But in fact, you know, we, we're kind of we're kind of shy on that second thing. And uh, we have an excellent relationship with the um, the library from Salt Lake City, Utah, Church of the Latter-day Saints, 
and they are said to be the largest. So with that brother sister relationship, it is very close. And I hope that you will learn to take advantage of what's available there via the Allen County Public Library as well. Um, the, uh, the background noise will be every now and then. I can't die out the four-year-old that's in the house, so please, uh, please tolerate me. Um, okay, so one of the things that we want to talk about um, as far as doing that research, as I said, I understood that there were some questions uh, about um, certain pitfalls uh, with, with specific ethnic groups. And I think that uh, one that I go to first and foremost is because we are the African-American Genealogical Society of Fort Wayne and the African-American uh, research is very uh, compromised from time to time. It is almost consistently out of the box looking at records that uh, you might not think to look at any other time. but you want to always make sure that you are looking at um, um, the basic groups, you know, your, your uh, census records, uh, court records, things of that nature. Um, we're going to uh, have some extended conversation about that as we move forward. And we're going to uh, handle a little bit about um, maybe some of those, let, let's just go into maybe some of the out of the box uh, things that might be out there for people that are looking at um, not traditional African American, but we do know that Africans were everywhere around the world uh, for various reasons and quite a bit to do with the uh, um, international trade, as it were, and for employment purposes as well. Um, one of the questions that come that that came to excuse me, just one minute. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian. I'm so sorry. Okay, um, the Chinese uh, immigration uh, information at the library is one that is very uh, interesting. I hope that uh, we're going to show a glimpse or two from some of the records that are there. It is an information collection and not necessarily uh, a, a census collection, if you will. And so we want to uh, let you know that there is some information that you can look at as far as those records are concerned. And that is because quite often um, other Asian groups were thrown in, um, um, other Asian groups were thrown in and hopefully you'll be able to take a look at that record to get some idea about the types of information that can be found. Let's uh, turn it over to uh, Dr. Brothers. Dr. Brothers, will you? Um... Sure, I'm right here. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, do your portion of the presentation. Okay, let me share my screen here. Okay, you, you want to uh, allow me to share my screen? Sorry, give me just a moment here. Okay, sure. And I wanna say, certainly say good afternoon. Welcome, I'm Dr. Alfred S. Brothers Jr. I'm Society Vice President and I, and I chair the training committee. And it's certainly a pleasure for me to, to share with you thoughts on how to do family genealogy research. I call this research a journey in time and space. And again, uh, truly a, a welcome to all of you. It's a pleasure again for me to share with you my thoughts and society's thoughts on how to do a, a genealogy research. And how do we start? I guess we start the journey with, with really three questions. How do we start the journey itself? Who are our relatives? And what are our family stories? Family stories are key here. As we look at how do we start a journey, we talk about what's involved. Who are our relatives? You may have relatives you are totally unaware of. I know I was, I grew up with folks who I didn't realize were in fact my cousins. What are our family stories? And these family stories can sh shape 
our research in terms of time and place. Remember, some of our stories include other countries as well. So have you done any family research or has any member of your family started research? What is your level of research? Are you a beginner, just starting? Have you been doing it for a while? Are you an advanced person? Have you started a family tree or a pedigree chart? We'll talk about those two. Are there specific questions you have about genealogy research? The time period that you're looking at, the location or what resources are available? We can tackle those questions at the end. Now, how does African-American genealogy research differ? I think the key difference is because of slavery in the United States. And doing research prior to 1870 is a difficult time period to research because of broken families, different locations, and many different names. The availability of resources can impact our research. We're talking about documents, family names, locations, where were our relatives? Slave records and slaveholders can be a difficult item to discern, but not impossible to locate and identify. There's also sometimes a reluctance of family members to share information, and that can be an important barrier. And also our family stories may not be as accurate as we'd like them to be. So how do we get started? Well, the key to getting started is to start with what you know. As we, when you start a family tree or pedigree chart, always start with you. And as you start that tree, look at these key areas. List your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, siblings. Try to identify family last names. First names can be nicknames and not legal names. And sometimes, like uh, my great uncle, whose name was Edward LeCount Burgess, used his middle name, LeCount. So again, it took a little while to try to find him. As you do this, uh, provide birth and death dates and locations. Provide marriage, immigration, and military information. Your family tree can be handwritten, as I did initially, or placed online at Ancestry.com or Family Search, for example. Now, this is a pedigree chart, a five-generation pedigree chart. And really what it does, it, it highlights, uh, again, typical information, birth, marriage, death dates and locations and the like. And, and it tries to capture a snapshot of each one of our relatives. Now, this is a snapshot of my family tree on on family search, I have a very small one on family search, but again, uh, in the in the middle here is myself and my wife, and again my kids, my parents, my wife's parents, and and so forth. So this really is what I call a family tree versus the pedigree chart. As you put that tree together, you need to evaluate: what do you not know? What's missing? Where did your family members live? We're talking about states and communities or even countries. Uh, part of my family uh, emigrated during the Revolutionary War to Canada and then came back in the early 1900s for Canada back to New England. So again, as you take a look during your research, look at where they live. Where did they work? What kind of work did they do? Where did they go to school or church? Remember, your family tree is a framework for your research. These are the key things that help you identify what you need to know about your ancestors. And the questions that you ask here help you to build a more complete picture of your ancestors. One of the key things that I, I recommend, again, in doing any kind of research is develop your individual research plan. As part of it, develop a timeline for your family and family members. As you do your research, ask family members. Other parts of your family may be doing research or have already done research, and they can share it with you. For example, my, uh, I've, I've got family members in Canada who've done research, particularly on, on my Canadian family members. I have uh, family members in the United States who've picked different family names, and that's what they research. If you use Ancestry or Family Search Online resources, the sites may provide hints for you to follow. A key thing I want to point out, newspaper articles are a great tool. Remember, they were the Facebook and Internet of the day. And as you take a look at, the, at this uh, research plan, select possible sources and, and locations, family Bibles, yearbooks. Key here is newspaper articles, cemetery, funeral home records, obituaries are a great uh, tool, and funeral programs. African-American resources may, may differ in different communities. 
But remember, the key thing to do is ask your family members. Another tool is establishing a timeline. Timelines is a critical piece of genealogy research. It puts your research in a time and a place, and it helps to identify resources and documents you can use. Let me break out of here real quick and show you what a timeline, I'll, I'll come back and, and show you what a timeline looks like. Let me go to the next one first here. Now, what is a research plan? The question you need to ask about a research plan is what records you wanna use? Where the record would have been recorded, the event itself. Where can you find it? Why do you wanna use it? And again, it may reside in many different locations. Some information you may be able to find online, but many times you have to physically go to a repository to uh, find information about it. But the key thing here is it helps you to define what you're trying to find and where you may find it. Let me get out of here for a second and, and go back and show you what I was talking about in terms of Show you some other documents here. Now, this is a, a, a verb right quick timeline. And can everybody see this one? Okay. This is a timeline. We cannot great... see it. We can't cannot... see it. Okay, let me see where it is and why I can't why you can't see. It. That's the reason I'm okay. You may have to stop sharing, Dr. Brothers, and then okay. uh, select a different resource or a different source. Yeah, I'm trying to get there right now to see what I, oh, here we go. Okay, you share, okay. Here it is here, okay. I wanna give you a quick look at uh, the genealogy timeline for my great-grandfather. Can you see this one now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, this is a short one. Uh, my great grandfather, my great grandfather was born in Nova Scotia, and again, what I'm trying to highlight here in this very, very short compact record is again his birth date, uh, and and where I have information relative to him. I found him in the did not find him in the 1861 census. I found him in the 1871 and 1881 census. The Canadian census are one year off. Uh, again, the U.S. census is on the even ten years. The uh, Canadian census is when you're off from that. And again, it, it continues. Now I found his marriage to my grandmother and, and the record associated with it. I find them in the 1891 census as, as shown here, we have a copy of it. I then find them in, in the 1900, 1901 census. Then in 1907, they emigrated to the United States. So we have the information in the US census. I find information in the 1910, 1920 and 1930 census on him. And he died in 1932 in Oaks Bluff, Massachusetts. So this gives you an insight on one kind of a short one. Let me pull another one up here and I wanna show you the interesting one is, is, is my timeline for my great uncle, as I mentioned, Edward LeCount Burgess. Now this is a little, a little bit more complicated. What I did do here again, as, as, it, showed, as it shows you, I showed him where he was born and where the information came from. I showed him where, where he was in the United, the 1900 census and pulled the census data out. The 1910 census, I did the same thing. I pulled the data out and also highlight where it came from. He um, registered for the draft in 1918. We get information for, for that one from, from the draft itself and where he was employed. I find him in the 1920 census. And I find him in the 1930 census. And the key places is, as I look at him, I, he, he was a boarder and lived uh, again in a boarding house. And I, I, and, and I tracked also that particular person who ran the boarding house. I did not find him in the 1940 census, but I did find his, night, his uh, World War II draft registration I found his, uh, in this case, his landlord. Uh, and I also found a relative, Emily Burgess. 
I said, uh, I asked myself, why can't I find him? Well, Emily Burgess's obituary listed LeCount Burgess as, a, as, as having a, attended the funeral. Poor Brooks' obituary did the same thing. So I, so I know he was uh, alive in, uh, during uh, the 1940s, uh, in 1944. I look at him in, in city directories, and again, the same thing uh, here. Again, it, it's a way to take a look at what information is available. And this particular piece of information talked about not only where he lived, but where he worked. And you notice uh, in the city directory, he named himself in 1930 LeCount Burgess, not Edward LeCount Burgess. Go back here now. The other one was talking about uh, a research plan. And this is an example of a small research plan here. What I try to do is, is, is identify what I'm trying to research, uh, what kind of, where should I research it, what my results are when I started and completed, where some of my sources are, and what information I already have available. And again, uh, Elmer Burgess, which was like Count Burgess's brother, again, I, I was trying to find out where he was buried. And again, we're able to check the uh, Brunswick Merlin newspaper, and we found out where he's buried. My, uh, on, on my father's side, again, uh, his grandmother, her last name was Johnson, so we're trying to find out more information about the Johnson families in Nova Scotia. We have found, uh, I've not found the birth information on Melissa Johnson, meaning a birth record. I'm trying to find that. On the other side of, my, of the family, uh, Washington Lee side, again, Mary Jane Lee was on a plumbing plantation in Frederick, Maryland, trying to find more information about that. Her husband, George Washington, was on the Buchanan plantation. I'm trying to find in information about that plantation. And the last one I mentioned, I did find out about William Le Edward LeCount Burgess. Again, he died in 1946. So again, it gave me a way of taking a look at uh, uh, different resources. Let me get back to here then. To the next line here. Now, what resources are available? And this is key for all of us. The local library. Again, we're blessed here to have the Allen County Public Library. Again, with all of its resources, computer, uh, microfilm, microfiche, books, uh, articles, the whole gamut, and newspapers. Even small libraries in small locations, if you find out where your relative lives, may have similar information in terms of newspapers. The churches provide fantastic information. Your photo albums can provide you information. Oral family history can give you a direction. But remember, it may not always be that accurate. I did a research for a cousin who uh, went to, whose relative went to Canada and, and passed away in Canada. Well, they thought he was in a, uh, uh, again, in, in a uh, card game and was killed in a card game. I did the research, no, he went swimming and drowned. So again, the, sometimes those family stories are not correct. Check with local genealogy societies. They have a myriad of information. And the same thing with local historical societies. Local schools can also provide more recent information. I did find out my, about my grandmother. Again, uh, she was born in 1885, and I have a school picture uh, 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 with, with her uh, parents taking that particular class out in a wagon, horse-drawn wagon, uh, on, on a picnic. Now, look at other online resources. Again, we have... Uh, Ancestry.com, FamilySearch.com, MyHeritage, their military sites, Fold3 being a, the primary one, Newspapers.com, and others highlight newspapers from around the country. The Allen County Public Library website, I'll just show you just a snapshot of it. It's a fantastic tool that can be accessed, uh, again, uh, not only at the library, but also at, at home. Google is a fantastic tool. Again, you may be able to find in Google, uh, where, where, your, where your ancestors lived and find information about more about that location, uh, the history of that location and other things. Wikipedia is a neat resource as it highlights what I call um, tremendous amounts of information on both the location and people in that location. So what uh, do I re uh, recommend in terms of research methods, particularly online? 
There are many online resources, but these for me are the top three, Ancestry.com, FamilySearch.com, and Fold3. Fold3, is, uh, it, it highlights military information. I do want to uh, point out that Ancestry is both a paid and a free site. Ancestry Search is free. Fold3 is a paid site, but available at the Allen County Public Library, as is Ancestry. And again, you get the institutional versions, which are more complete than the ones you get at home. The great library genealogists are more than willing to help you get started and assist you as you pr proceed through your research. Now, let's take a look at, at a couple of things here. Now, this is the welcome page on, on online for Ancestry.com. Again, uh, as you take a look, you find out it has family trees, has a search function, a DNA function, and others. And again, it, we're talking about signing in, a, a, a setting up a sign in, and, and that's how you get to it. Now, I am here, I'm showing here that I'm actually signed in at, I use the term, um, family search. So again, it also has trees, and I showed you the trees, it has a search mode, has memories. It has index and activities. And many of these have all kinds of other resources associated with them, card catalogs and the like. Uh, for example, uh, both uh, military resources are available at ancestry.com as uh, some of it is also available at uh, Family Search. And here's a search box over here that talks about putting in what you know, first name, last name, place, year you're looking for. And again, sometimes, just a, a first name or a last name and a location and the date will help you find what you're looking for. Now, this is Fold3. And again, this is a paid site, but again, it's available at the Allen County Public Library. But those who really want to do more in-depth research in terms of military uh, genealogy, this is a fantastic tool. Again, uh, uh, again, you can access it at home if, if you, in fact, have a paid subscription to it, or you can access it at Allen County Public Library. Now this is newspapers.com. And again, this is how I found out about my two uncles. Uh, uh, their obituaries told me where they were buried. Uh, again, they gave me an insight in terms of where they died, the hospital that they died and the like. So this is a fantastic tool. One of the other things about newspapers are they, they talk about the community in, in which your relative lived. And you may find out that uh, again, as with my Edward account, uh, relative. I found out when, when he was promoted from one grade to the other, and again, what, what he was studying in high school in Washington, D.C. So again, you'd be surprised in terms of things that you can find. This is uh, just a snapshot of, of, of the genealogy page, and, and Richard will talk more about it, at the Allen County Public Library. It's a fantastic resource that you can use both in the library itself as well as at home. Let's look at advanced research strategies. As we move more uh, further with our interest in terms of our relatives and ourselves, DNA analysis is one. So you can take a DNA test with a number of com companies. And again, and we encourage you to do so, encourage family members to do so. It provides you more information about possible relatives. I do want to point out, I, I have found uh, uh, again, where I couldn't find my uh, grandfather Yates's relatives, I found people with the same last name who I connect with and were able to uh, discern that. I also used DNA analysis and found out my mother's relatives, again, on the Ball side, the Ball family. I didn't know them because her mother died seven days after she was born. So again, we never got into deep uh, discussions about her family. Courthouse records. But you need to understand both the current and past county and state boundaries because they change. And again, the records may be located in a different location. Census records, both federal and state. Some states had uh, had uh, state census. Uh, Massachusetts had one in 1855 and 1865. And that's how I found information about some of my Monroe relatives who were in the Civil War and were listed as a way, at, a, a, a way in service. City and town directories are fantastic tools. Voting records, tax records, we mentioned military records. And again, later in, in our time period in, in the uh, 20th century, social security records. But remember, over time, probate records and wills have been a major source of information for all people. Land records, did your relatives own or rent property? And again, you can find out in terms of 
uh, some of the census data because that was a question that was asked. The Freeman Bureau records, again, for the time for the, that they uh, cover are a fantastic reservoir information as people moved about, uh, also as they set up households, where they lived, where they worked and the like. Now, a key thing is, is really reviewing the progress. And the key here is uh, really looking at the fan club. The fan club consists of friends, associates, and neighbors who can help you identify your relatives' movements and family member locations. My brother's family, both relatives, associates, folks living in the same area, and neighbors moved from Nova Scotia, many places in Nova Scotia, to Massachusetts in the early 1900s, for example, different names. Uh, uh, in, in that area. And this is a key method to find your relatives if you're unsure of the location of movement. Look at the people who they live with in the location of, uh, that they left. But a key thing here is, is really is in terms of time and effort to search a few people at a time so you can focus your particular research. Now, in conclusion, I've gone, this is just a snapshot. And again, uh, as a society does, uh, once a month, we have a workshop and, and cover different topics. But I do want to point out that the key thing when you start your research is start with yourself. Look at what you know about your family, build a family tree, evaluate what information is missing, establish a research plan and goals, and use all of the available research resources that, that are available to you. And remember, you can also email, uh, write a letter to other locations in the country who can also help you, and then review and evaluate your results. Thank you, Dr. Brothers. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is, is stop sharing my screen here. Just a minute here so I figure out where to do that. Okay, there we go. And again, uh, we have time at the end for questions. I'll be happy to help anyone, any way, shape, or form, uh, getting that, that research journey started. And next up, we have Kurt Witcher. Uh, yes, good afternoon. I'm going to share my screen. And I hope you can uh, see that presentation beginning slide. Um, thank you so much for uh, being here this afternoon. I'm Kurt Witcher. I am Director of Special Collections at the Allen County Public Library. And I'm really honored to be the Genealogy Center Manager for a few decades now. But mostly I'm honored to spend some time with you this afternoon. Um, I really wanna reiterate a couple of things that Roberta said and that Dr. Brother said. Oh my goodness, um, it's wonderful whenever uh, Dr. Brothers can be with us to uh, provide his keen engineering, logical way of presenting an amazing amount of information. All those points that he touched on and all those record groups that he mentioned really are uh, most consequential um, in anyone's research. So I would just, um, again, encourage you to uh, refer to your notes and to what he said, because there's, there, there's so much gold in there. Um, I want to roll all the way back to Roberta's uh, introduction. Um, I'm pretty passionate about the power of story, right? So for a long time, for probably half of my career, uh, a small part of my brain wondered, why, why in the world do people do genealogy? I like it because I'm a history nerd. I've always enjoyed biography. But why do people really do genealogy? Why do they do family history? And about a generation ago, 25 out of my 40 year plus career here at the library, I kind of hit on something that I think is very true. And finally, science is, is, is validating that, is, is that story is really powerful. Story can change our lives story, particularly our family stories, can really positively affect the lives of our children and grandchildren. Story is so powerful. Scientists are telling us that knowing one's story and telling one's story actually alters chemical processes in our brain. 
They say that children who just know the four names of their grandparents succeed better in life, have a better plan for their life, are able to adapt to changes that we know happen all the time. The last two and a half, three years has been pandemic filled changes. And we know there are other changes in our lives as well. I just am so passionate about the power of story. Jesse Jackson, again, almost a generation ago, remember when he had his mantra, I am somebody. Most of us didn't appreciate, I don't think, the deep wisdom of his phrase, of that phrase, I am somebody. And that's a really a powerful thing for all of us to appreciate and to document and, and to really discover our family stories and tell those stories. For individuals um, who are interested in family history and family story, oh my goodness, there is a wealth of resources. So I was asked just to talk a few minutes about the value of the Genealogy Center here in Fort Wayne, Indiana in family history research. For those of you who are in the area, it really can be your physical research assistant where you can walk in and use over a million, 1 million, 1.1 million physical items. But it can also be your research assistant if you're from Georgia, like one of our participants is from this afternoon. Uh, we really value helping people find their stories. So let's just go through a couple of slides here just to highlight some of the things in the Genealogy Center and how you can use those things. Um, I like to call the Genealogy Center your trifecta of genealogy assistance. And the three bullet points on the screen are really the trifecta. As I just mentioned, we have a very large physical collection. Now, for those of you who can't get here easily, you might say, eh, great, not for me because I can't get there. Uh, well, I'll mention a few tips to get you at least a peek in the collection and some strategies you can use in the brief time that we have together. Secondly, we have an amazing collection of online resources. Dr. Brothers mentioned those licensed databases, again, that people who can come into the Genealogy Center can access for free. All the major genealogical databases, newspapers, newspaper archive, Ancestry, MyHeritage, Fold3, um, about 20 different licensed databases provide you with really a wealth of information. But there are also a lot of free databases not quite the size of Ancestry, but you might be amazed at what you'll find in those free databases. And it's available 24 seven from anywhere in the world that has an internet connection. That's what's nice about our, our free databases. And the last point, I hope this doesn't sound immodest, but I have a team who works with me here in the Genealogy Center where we're really dedicated to helping you find your story. That's why we're here. We're not here to collect stuff. We're not here to say, wow, we got a big place here. Wow, we got a million records. We're here to say, oh my goodness, we have a million records, a million physical items. How can we leverage those to help you find your story? So I hope that you will take advantage of opportunities to engage with us. So rolling back to the first point, our physical collection, why is that important? Well, some of you may have heard the term, all history is local. That's why a collection of materials about a specific geographic area is so very important. And again, I'm gonna draw on Dr. Brother's wisdom. He said, libraries anywhere may have collections if they're in the place where you're researching your ancestor. So I have a trick question and I can't really ask it very well in the Zoom setting. We probably could have if we wanted to, but what's the best, the absolute best library in the Milky Way galaxy for your research? Now, I know some of you will say, oh, Kurt's begging for someone to say Allen County Public Library. No, I'm not begging for that. What's the best library for your research? The one that has your answers, right? So all history is local. That means, yes, you can use a large collection like the Allen County Public Libraries 
genealogy center collection, but it also means as a good historical researcher, as a good family historian, you're gonna look for libraries in the communities where you believe your ancestors lived and see if you can't tap their local history collections. With a collection as large as the one we have here, we have something and a lot of some things in many instances for every single location in the United States, even the really small ones. That's what we've been doing since 1965 when the collection really got going. So all history is local. That means we have an amazing amount of material here for all kinds of localities in North America, British Isles, Eastern and Western Europe, and beyond. So when you're using our collection, search for family in the records and histories of towns and counties where you believe or you think your family lived. Let's take a look at a quick example here. So I went into our online catalog. I'll show you in a minute how you can find that. And I searched for Estill County, Kentucky. It's a little bit challenging to see on the screen, but where my cursor is kind of circling or underlying, we have 36 print publications on Estill County, Kentucky. You can see the first three lined up here, grave sites, schools, circuit court records. That just goes to show you a little bit of the flavor of the types of records we have. We collect everything about a locale that puts a person in a place at a time doing something. So we're not just birth, marriage, and death. We're person in a place at a time doing something. So a scrapbook, a tax record, wills and probates, as Dr. Brothers mentioned. Basically, anything that identifies people and, and gives you the context of their life. Like, what were they doing there? Where did they live? Who lived with them? Who were their neighbors? The friends, associates, and neighbors that Dr. Brothers talked about. That's what we collect. So you just see the first three of the Estill County, Kentucky. Now I'm gonna take a quick pause here because I know some of you, maybe all of you uh, are like me, you're frustrated at library catalogs. I've been in the biz about 43 years. I have not found an intuitive library catalog yet, whether it's a public library, state library, academic library, they're just not intuitive. If you're looking for an Amazon experience or a Google experience, you'll be really disappointed. Please don't let that dissuade you from your research or frustrate you too much. Just take time to play. I know that sounds odd when you're talking about doing family history, but most catalogs, they just you just need to take a little bit of time to play. What works, what doesn't work? What, if I put my surname in, what comes back as a search result? If I put a location in, if I put the name of a church in, if I put the name of a denomination in, try some experiments. I even advise people to do that with other online databases like Ancestry. Do you know that you can put Humpty Dumpty in the search bar for Ancestry and get over a thousand search results? What does that tell you about how Ancestry search works? We won't get it. We won't get into that today. But uh, so with our catalog and every other library catalog, don't get frustrated. Just play around. Play around with surname and play around with proper nouns like church names, ethnic groups, and then most specifically use geographic locations. So again, I, I did Estill County, Kentucky, and you have the first three, and it's a nice variety of information, graveside schools and, and, and court records. Another index on our site is the periodical source index. And this is another way to access more print, the magazines, the quarterlies, the newsletters, of organizations that have published, some for just a few years, some for more than a century, have published genealogical data, family history information. So I did a surname search on the word, excuse me, the surname, Jackson, as you can see my cursor up toward the top, and I got over 4,000 search results. So we have indexed here at the library over 3 million articles and have included it in this periodical source index. So right now you have on the screen here, the first of 4,000 plus Jackson surname entries. How do you find which one might be yours? Well, you can organize the periodicals alphabetically. You can search for oldest to newest or newest to oldest. 
You can search by publisher, or you can use this search box up here to search the title fields for a school name, for a given name to go with the surname Jackson, for a time period, for a type of record, birth, death, Bible, or you can just browse through. Browsing through 4,100 records might take a few, a few moments that we don't have. So all kinds of different ways. I did another search for uh, Maryland, for a particular county in Maryland, and I got, I put them into two columns here, all kinds of search results for Frederick County, Maryland. Notice I get results that are ethnically based. So here's 20 articles for that county just on African-Americans. But I also get record articles, census records, church records. I have 218 church records. I may find African-American genealogical research and family stories in church records and also under African-American. And we'll take a look at that just now. So here are my African-American search results, the first ones of those. Look at the different periodicals. Frederick County Journal, the African-American Historical and Genealogical Society, Civil War Times, Historical Society of Frederick County again. Amazing amounts of information for us to discover our family stories are hidden, and I use that term intentionally, are hidden in periodical literature. Why is it hidden? Because most library catalogs, most Google searches won't bring up the specific articles that you and I need for our research. That's why the Genealogy Center started indexing periodicals in 1985, like forever ago. And these 3 million plus entries and growing are on our website for, for free use. Now, the actual article isn't on the website, but the reference to the article is you can engage us to get a copy of the article. You can engage the society. Notice all the publishers have addresses over here on the right-hand side. If you look at the publication year, if the address is fairly recent, excuse me, the publication year is fairly recent, then the address is probably accurate. For a journal that was published in 1921, eh, the address might not be accurate. They may not still be in existence, but there are all kinds of ways you can find the actual, the actual articles. So Percy is a great, a great index. Here's just another example of me adjusting the year of publication to get different articles to pop up in the periodical source index for, for Frederick County. So amazing amounts of information. Here's a screenshot, um, just a little wider than the one that Dr. Brothers provided of the Genealogy Center's homepage. If you look at the top bar where the top red arrow, the big red arrow coming in from the left, that's where our catalog is. Kind of hidden, um, but that's just the library's web design. In that search box, what, what do you put in there? Well, you put in the surname that you're looking for. You can put in the ethnic group you're looking for. And most importantly, for most of our research, you can put in the place, the geographic location whether it's a city, a town, a region, a county. Typically the county is the best geographic designator to put in because it will harvest, it will get you the most information. So that's where I put in, if I was interested in looking for books on Estelle County, Kentucky. The second search box, the one where the second large red arrow is coming in from the left, a little offset from the first one. It says, search our free databases. So we have 3.3 million records and images in our free databases. You might say, wow, that's a lot. Well, Ancestry has over 30 billion, 30 billion in their database. So ours is like little teeny, teeny, tiny database, but one, ours is accessible, free from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Secondly, Ours is, or ours contains, I should say, material that Ancestry doesn't have, um, material that a lot of the large information aggregators don't have because it's too small. Most large information aggregators like Ancestry, Family Search even, are not interested in a database of a couple hundred to a couple thousand people. But that database or that book or that record set might have your ancestor in it. So we collect those, what I call, um, 
crumbs that fall off the table of the large information aggregators. Uh, so let's take a let's take a, a quick look here. So these are our on-site or licensed databases. Dr. Brothers already mentioned those ancestry. Um, several really neat collections of African American newspapers. Um, Dr. Brothers pointed out how important newspapers are, and I just want to verify that. I like to tell people that newspapers are the chroniclers of the life and times of the people in their communities. What's unique and special about African American newspapers is that the Chicago Defender may have picked up an article that was published by an African-American paper in Philadelphia because they networked and they exchanged information a lot. African-American newspapers are so valuable, much more valuable one might say than regular papers because of the depth of the articles and the networking that goes on between the various publishers. Other online on-site databases, uh, African-American historical serials, uh, Ebony Magazine Archive, and the Slavery and Anti-Slavery Transnational Archive, which provides you with a lot of context for 19th and 18th century um, African-American lives. Uh, the ones I really like to tell you about for just a few moments um, are the ones that are free and available on our website. So for those of you who, um, uh, really want to get a good handle on what's in our collection, specific to African American research. The African American Gateway is amazing. Uh, it's another database that we put together in house. I'll show you that in just a moment. Really have to give a shout out to uh, the Allen County, Indiana resources for African American research. Marsha Smiley, a community activist, board member for the African African American Historical Society Museum. Um, we partner with her and every week we publish a couple of more items in the Marsha Smiley African American collection. In her collection, there are thousands of memorials or homegoing programs, which is the, the next bullet point you see there. Um, we've done a wonderful partnership with Marsha in making so much of the story of African-American families and life in Allen County, Northeast Indiana, um, documented and available for, for everyone to access. Uh, we've also worked with uh, the Indiana African-American Genealogy Group and the Cleveland Area Group to publish as many homegoing and memorial programs as we possibly can. And we also have a growing collection of the Women's Missionary Society of the African-American Methodist Episcopal Church. Let's take a quick look at the African-American Gateway. Again, this is freely accessible to anyone who comes to our site. Um, it's divided into five areas, uh, US states, US regions, other countries, subjects, and legacy events. Um, US states and US regions are probably the best for our research, other countries as well but I'm, we're gonna show you the US states portion. So when you click on US states, you'll get a map of the United States and you click on the county that, excuse me, the, the state that you're interested in. In this instance, it's Mississippi. So we click on Mississippi and I'm just showing you a screenshot of what you get when you click on Mississippi. The first thing we present you with is a really solid collection of websites for African-American research specific to Mississippi. Now, you can say, I can Google that, Kurt. I don't need your website. True, you can. But this is a quick way of getting a lot of good free sites. I wouldn't say not to Google. But after you get done scrolling down the websites, though, you get an alphabetical by county listing for Mississippi of every single resource we have in our collection specific to African-American research. Now, please don't just use these because we'll want to use the county history for this particular county or this county or this county, the top three there, if those are counties of interest. But this tells you specifically where in our microfilm collection and where in our book collection, you will find material specific to African-American research. So this helps you sort your way through or find your way through the 1.1 million 
physical items that we that we have in our collection. Uh, I just commend it to you as a great jumping off point. Even if you're not able to get to our collection, this gives you specifics about what's available for a county. And maybe you can search for the records we have here in other libraries, closer to you libraries that you can access. I mentioned the Marsha Smiley collection. We're just really proud and honored to work with Marsha on presenting um, a, a big part of the African-American story in Fort Wayne Allen County in Northeast Indiana. You can see the various types of categories, memorial cards, the museum, biographies of African-Americans in this area, um, crossing opportunities thresholds, some really neat stories, events, fraternal organizations, um, just a really great way. Look for these kinds of collections on other library websites in areas where your research is centered. So I, I, I hope that encourages you. Even if you don't have Allen County ancestors, come look at this and see if that inspires you to find similar types of records uh, in, in other places. I wanna give you just a quick look at part of the collection from the Indiana African-American Genealogy Group that's headquartered in Indianapolis. Um, we have just finished digitizing and posting all of their homegoing programs. And these are wonderful capsules of history. These are better than obituaries that you will find, better than funeral notices that we normally think of. So this is eight pages and I've kind of put it together in several different screens, but um, Mr. DeFranz, uh, you have his order of service and then, oh my goodness, you have his obituary. And it takes me four PowerPoint screens to show you his obituary. Tells about his young life, uh, tells about his academic career, uh, tells about his wife and what they did, what they enjoyed doing, um, their church membership, other clubs that he belonged to, an avid photographer, just amazing amounts of material. Look at all of these listed family members. Uh, just absolutely amazing. It's Paul Bears, honorary Paul Bears, church he belonged to, the funeral home. In this one homegoing program, you have probably three dozen different ways of accessing different pieces of information, as well as almost three dozen family members listed. So um, we have tens of thousands of homegoing programs from the Great Lakes area. And we continue to uh, quest to, to grow that collection because it is, it is so very important to, to our, our research. Before we depart, I know I'm going just a little bit long, but I'm, I'm just so honored and excited to, to talk with all of you. On the Genealogy Center's page, there's a ribbon about half, well, I'm gonna say about a third of the way down that has these buttons on it, Explore Genealogy, Genealogy Community, Life Stories, Pathfinders. If you click on Explore Genealogy, this will pop up. If you click on Family History Archive, this will pop up. These five links here will take you to amazing places for your research. The Family Search Digital Library, you should be able to get into that even without creating a free Family Search account, the Family Search Digital Library, you and I have a personal library of over 530,000 books. Why? Because that's how many books are in the Family Search Digital Library that have to do with geographic locations and yeah. surnames. So you have a half a million books you can access from anywhere in the Milky Way galaxy with internet connection anytime, day or night. You might call that Lincoln Insomnia Buster. If you can't sleep, don't worry about it. Get up, turn on your computer and search for things in this amazing database. Right underneath it, the internet archive, oftentimes we sometimes forget about Google. We sometimes forget about Wikipedia. Oftentimes we forget about the internet archive. Go there and search. They have millions upon millions of digitized books. A slice of those, a chunk of those are family histories and especially local histories county histories, church histories. So the Internet Archive may present to us another personal digital library where we can search for 
individuals that we're interested in or download for free complete books that we can search on our computer and then dispense with if they're not of any of any value to us. But we put this link on our page because it's a quick way of getting to some amazing resources. Why did we put familysearch.org over here? Well, because the familysearch.org main page under research is the research wiki. I know Roberta talked briefly at the beginning about other ethnic groups that some of our participants this afternoon might be interested in. If you go to familysearch.org, click on research and then go down to wiki, there's almost 100,000 juried, researched wiki entries for literally the world. So amongst those 100,000 entries, you're gonna find, how do I begin Chinese research, Caribbean research, Bolivian research, wherever your research might be, wherever your family stories and paths may take you, Family Search has a wiki that will give you some great beginning steps and some great online sources to really start you know, complementing the stories and the history that you've gotten from, from your family, from your family members. Finally, I, I just so encourage you that trifecta, um, engage with us. Um, if we can't do something that you're asking for, we'll tell you. If we don't have the information, we'll tell you with a great hint on where you can go for the information, but please do engage with us. Um, Again, as I mentioned, it's, it's such an honor to be with you uh, this afternoon, and it's so important for African-American stories to be researched, preserved, and presented. Uh, it's so critical for those voices to be part of family history. Your history is our history. Put our website up there, genealogycenter.org. It's an amazing quick, easy place to go. Do we have everything? Of course not. Uh, but explore it. See how it can help you. Email us. We will answer every email. Again, if we can't provide you with the specific answer, we'll give you some great hints some great strategies. Genealogy at acpl.info. If you're one of those people that like to call, give us a call. We answer dozens of calls a day. We do research consultations. So you can email us and say, I want to call you at two o'clock on Tuesday, is that time acceptable? I'd like to talk to you about my research problem. Or, hey, I wanna do a Zoom consultation. I wanna show you some documents. I want you to talk to me on Zoom. We do those as well. We also do email thread consultations. You email us a question, we email back, you may email a follow-up. So we really do wanna be your research assistant. We have over a hundred programs, free programs on YouTube. So you could go to our page, genealogycenter.org, scroll all the way down to the bottom, click on the YouTube link, you'll see over 100 and it's growing all the time. Uh, so probably by end of second quarter, there'll be 120. So there's an amazing numbers of ways you can access us. Last st statement is on the bottom of the slide there. Uh, we want you to find your family stories. Uh, we really do. Um, the power of story is so important. So um, I'm going to uh, stop my screen share and turn it back to uh, Ann Guzzi. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, that was Kurt Witcher from the Genealogy Center at the Allen County Public Library here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, my name is Ann Guzzi Rogers. I am the secretary of the African American Genealogical Society of Fort Wayne. I am... Um, the, uh, the other thing that we wanted to discuss, um, this is a Black History Month presentation in partnership with the Office of Diversity and Multicultural Affairs at Purdue University, Fort Wayne, PFW. And one of the other topics of interest is um, how to research other ethnic groups. Um, it is Black History Month. It is the Office of Multicultural uh, Services or Multicultural Affairs. And um, there are resources. I'm gonna share my screen. And those of us in the society, we've got several uh, board members here, um, can maybe chime in because we did want to talk about other groups. If you can see my screen, and maybe Kurt, this is something that you can chime in on. 
I do know that at the Genealogy Center at the Allen County Public Library, you have research, resources such as these if you're doing international research or Caribbean research. Uh, Kurt, can you speak about these resources? Absolutely, and thank you so much, Ngozi, for um, pointing these out. Um, on our main genealogy page, if you can remember in your mind where it said that tab about a third of the way down where it said Pathfinders, uh, you can click on that and, and we call these these snapshots. So um, Angazi has uh, two of those um, on, on the screen, International and Caribbean, where we discern there has been some interest in customers coming into the Genealogy Center, we create these little snapshots or, or tip sheets. And those in a way mirror, but only slightly what I just told you about as far as family searches, research wikis. These are intended to give you ideas, uh, I dare say inspiration, if you will, um, about, oh, I should be looking for these kind of resources. If you can see under, uh, in smaller print under international, you can see Czech, you can see French, Hispanic, Hungarian, um, et cetera. And, and then Ngozi has the Caribbean one right underneath that. Uh, so um, it's not meant to be comprehensive. It's meant to spur thought and inspiration like, oh, so here's some major resources. Wonder what else they have under cemeteries or under church records. In each of these snapshots, we try to do sort of like a Cindy's list. If you're familiar with Cindy's list, we kind of have an alphabetical list of subjects. So cemetery, church, land, military, um, and put just a few of the resources we have available here in the Genealogy Center. And many of those resources are available elsewhere as well. Uh, so these are meant as good jumping off points um, again, if you marry these snapshots with Family Search's research wiki, you could really have um, a great start and really some powerful help in getting to sources that help you find your story. And another resource, this actually um, was um, uncovered or brought to our attention by uh, Roberta Ridley for this presentation. This is a resource that she uh, uh, provided, Chinese immigration and Chinese in the United States. Kurt, would you like to speak on this? The National Archives and Records Administration, oh my goodness, Ngozi, they, they have amazing uh, amounts of information. Now, we don't have these actual records here. I believe as Roberta was um, saying at the very beginning, um, these records really are available through the National Archives. Um, I don't even think they're available on Ancestry yet, uh, but this, these guides that are published by NARA, the National Archives and Records Administration, do provide um, detailed information on what is in these record sets and what office or how to get to them through the National Archives and Records Administration. Now, the pandemic has blown up a lot of things. And one of the things that's blown up is uh, a smooth path to request information from the National Archives. Um, but they're, they're piecing that back together. They're getting processes back together. Again, um, contact us here in the Genealogy Center if you find something in these great guides that are available online, uh, they're available at the National Archives uh, website. Uh, contact us if you'd like help in getting access to some to some of these records. I, I would have to also uh, commend to you as an insomnia buster, um, something to do when you can't sleep some night, because it takes a lot of time because there's so much information there. But the National Archives, archivesplural.gov is their website. Oh my goodness, you can find so much on many of the ethnic groups that have come to settle here in the United States, Chinese, Hispanic, you name it. There's so much. If the federal government had anything to do with the particular ethnic group, um, there will be something in the National Archives and oftentimes many some things in the National Archives. Uh, thank you, Kurt and Ngozi. Um, 
and just keeping it real for everybody out there. A uh, little domestic interruption there. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to share, um, we had a snap of some of the records that are acquired uh, by the um, immigration department as it relates to, for example, the Chinese immigration. And, and Gazi, if you could, uh, if you could just uh, share with our viewers an image and, and so that I can touch on some of the information that might be available for a potential ancestor out there, that would be really great. Um, we want to know that everything is not accessible these days for political reasons. But there are records that are housed at our awesome Allen County Public Library that you could possibly look at to uh, determine if or not they're connected to your ancestor. International records are always sometimes compromised by political issues, and that's something that you can keep in mind as well. Uh, but the images that we had um, reflected and that I came across these many years ago, and they're still available at the Allen County Public Library for individuals who immigrated to the United States and were, uh, shall we say, um, apprehended either because they questioned immigration records or they questioned uh, the legitimacy of these immigrants who were classified as Chinese. Uh, I bring that up and I say classified as Chinese because there was a um, for loss of a better word, a bigoted approach to people with quote unquote slant eyes that were grouped into a category that they may not or should not have been included in. And, um, and Guzzi, can we take a, a look at that? Thank you so much. And in this viewing, we see that the individuals, if you were able to look at that very closely and you should be able to view it at a later time, that these individuals were apprehended for a certain violations and then they were investigated to determine if whether or not they were actual um uh, if their immigration was documented is is it legitimate that type of thing this is one of the uh types of collections that's available from chinese immigrants if whether or not we have information like that for other cultural groups that uh the allen county library has been so uh determined to acquire would require researching the database, of course, to see. But this, this is a gem. This is a gem for people who are trying to track ancestorship that perhaps maybe they know that that's how their ancestors came into the United States. Other in information that uh, might be acquired from this document, you can follow the court cases in order to come up with it. Uh, Kurt did um, um, give me an update on international situations as far as politics are concerned that you may not be able to get into the records actually in China at this time. But that's just an example of what is readily available for you at the Allen County Public Library. Another one that I wanted to mention, just because I have had intense uh, experience at looking at, uh, looking at this information, are um, immigrations from Mexico. Mexico with um, uh, uh, railroad crossings, um, bridge crossings, as well as coming in uh, through the ports of entry. Something that you might wanna take the time to take a look at at the Allen County Public Library. Those immigration records oftentimes include photographs of ancestors that you may actually be looking for. So I wanted to share that with you uh, is, is there's a lot to look at, a lot to consider, and of course you want to look at the possibility of genealogical groups that are great, are available in those countries or in the country of your concern. If you have specific questions and you just need to address those to the Allen County Public Library as Kurt, which you did indicate, and they will look to see what we actually have. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I wanted to um, Again, refer to the information sheets that were, were pointed out by Nguzi and Kurt. I thank you so very much for stepping in for me there. And um, also, uh, we want to take a look at African Americans past 1860. 1860 being the, the um, prior to the Civil War 
1870 being the actual first year that was supposed to be all inclusive of African Americans. We know they're not. Uh, even the census they took in 2010 is not all inclusive. So in 1860, when there was a fear of being uh, apprehended or put into a captive situation, uh, we would not have, um, we wouldn't have all the records. But I just wanted to touch back on those things. And you have questions on the international records. Um, be specific. We'll let you know. The Allen County Public Library will let you know. And we're glad to help you in any way that we can from the African American Genealogical Society. But submit the questions and we can at least address that and maybe even direct you to a genealogy group in those areas that might be able to assist you. I think that that's, uh, I don't know, we got questions out there from people. Uh, again, I apologize for my interruption, but you got the best of the best. Hello, good afternoon. This is Rhonda Murrayweather from the Office of Diversity and Multicultural Affairs. And again, I wanna thank everyone for participating um, in this workshop. But um, members, um, I would like for you to address, what would you say if someone was kind of nervous or anxious about what they may discover about their family if they started doing their research? That's a favorite topic of mine. Uh, as, I, <laughs> as I indicated uh, very early on uh, in, the, in the onset of the, of the program, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly is who we all are. Like it or not, that's who we all are. We are the sum total of everything that has come before us. And, and I might want to add the things that will come after. You don't know what it is that your grandchildren, in my case, great-grandchildren, that might be thinking of something about you that is totally uh, unsubstantiated, shall we say. There's no proof to whatever those thoughts are. And in the past, you don't have any proof unless you do your research. Do your research. Be prepared. That's that part of being in a genealogy state of mind. Being in a genealogy state of mind is research, is a research state of thinking. You need to be prepared for whatever it is that you're going to find. And my goodness, there you are, live and in color, fair, not so fair, medium complected, dark complected. It doesn't matter what your color, the skull of your skin is. You are a person, you're a human being that God has saw fit to create. And you are the sum total at this very moment of all those that have come before you. And therefore, you should open your mind to receive the information that you're about to discover, to know that it all came together for you to be the awesome individual that you are. If I can just chime in to compliment what you said, Roberta, this is Kurt. Um, I would just, for anyone who is apprehensive about uh, discovering their story, I would just highly recommend um, trying to find, and I can send some literature to you, um, trying to find and read about the power of story. Um, mm. Story is just so very important. Educators and scientists are telling us now that there is power in story. Um, it helps our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. Generations will never meet. It will help them be fuller humans. It will help them be uh, more accepting of change and diversity and more accepting of the challenges that life brings. Um, and there have been so many uh, individuals and so many groups in society, so many African-Americans, so many Mexican-Americans, so many Latinx whose stories aren't part of our county's stories, our state's stories, our county's stories. And we need to fix that. Um, our story is our story, everybody's story. Everybody needs to be represented. 
And again, beyond that, I know I'm being redundant, but beyond that, story is so powerful. It changes people's lives. I'll be quiet just a moment, um, but I'm just really passionate about this, the power of story. The Genealogy Center is embarking upon um, a trial, if you will, with a university and with a company on reminiscence therapy. And it's um, a bunch of scientists are getting together and they begin to discover about looking at old photographs, how that helps people that are suffering on the dementia continuum slow the digression down, helps bring them meaning, helps bring them back. So just looking at photographs and talking about who's in the photograph and their lives and what they did and why, why do they look happy? Why did they look sad? That helps people stay plugged in. There's so much power in our stories. Um, to use poor English, you know, how can we not do that? You know, how, how can we not do that? Um, I, I, I have to bridge on that, uh, bridge on what Kurt said, and I, I do honor him. Um, my technical genealogy uh, experience is certainly uh, based on my uh, relationship with Mr. Witcher as the director of the Allen County Genealogical uh, Department. What he just stated is more powerful than you know until you begin to let it simmer in your thought process is so important. It's so important that if you look at what's going on socially these days, you know how important it is, but you have to put it into play. And the only way you put it into play, as I often have said, is to give voice to the ancestors. Look back at what the ancestors have accomplished, what they endured, what they were able to accomplish. It's so important to give that voice. And the only individuals that can give that voice are those who are surviving today. That's you. That's you giving recognition to, and I, I am a very, um, how can I say it? A very um, pictorial individual in my mind. The whips, the lashes, the starvation, the fear, the struggle. The, and many of us have a diverse background because of the history of the United States and its bondage. Whether it is Anglo-American, African-American, Hispanic American, Asian American, or any other group that I may have neglected to speak on unintentionally, you must dig into the story of the ancestors to identify yourself, to give identity to the children that you have bore and the children that will come from them. We are all, for those who are might be offended, I apologize, and then again, I don't, we are all God's creatures. We have all come from a very centered location. We have come forward to do that which we have been purposed to do. And part of that purpose is to identify your lineage. It is spiritual, it is, it is social, it is psychological, and I encourage you to dig deep into who you really are so that you can pass that on to your children and your grandchildren. Allen County Public Library is here to serve. The African American Genealogical Society is here to serve. There are other societies, depending on where you're coming from, they're waiting to hear from you as well. But the purpose of doing this is to have identity that you can caress and take pride in and be able to move forward and instrument your children and your grandchildren and children to come from it in order to be able to say, this is who I am. Thank you. Well, our time has come to uh, a close. It is 2.29. If there are questions, please put them in the chat. I have put our uh, email address, our website information um, in the chat as well. 
The chat also has the link to the African American Gateway that Kurt Witcher uh, spoke of. Um, if you would like to be uh, a part of our email list, please put your um, information in the chat as well. Your email in the chat. We appreciate you. We have other um, programs coming up here in February. If you are interested, uh, you can either uh, check out our Facebook page, just search uh, aagsfw.com or send us an email at aagsfw at gmail.com for more information. Are there any questions? Again, this is Rhonda from PFW. I just want to thank uh, the Allen County Public Library for their assistance and the African American Genealogy of Fort Wayne. Um, I've used both of these services and I love them. I appreciate them. I love this partnership. I look forward to doing something like this in the future. Also, if there happens to be any um, PFW or I Fort Wayne students, please email me um, to let me know that you are took part in this activity. So again, I appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a wonderful time starting their, their family research. And thank you to everyone putting their email in the, the chat. We will send you, I will send you the attachments from today's presentation, as well as putting you on our email list so that you will get updates on upcoming uh, programs. And that is our time. And can you uh, 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 let folks know that uh, they can get a copy of the chat if they need it? Yes, yes, thank you, Dr. Brothers. Um, if you click on the chat button at the bottom of your screen, the chat button, it is right next to the share screen. The, uh, the chat box will open up. The lower right-hand corner, you will see three dots. When you highlight that, it says more. If you click on that at the top, there's an opportunity for you to save the chat. So again, go to chat. It's an icon at the bottom of your screen. If you don't see it, highlight it with your cursor. Once you click on that, it will open up the chat box so that you can see everything that people have been saying during the program. Hover your cursor over the three dots that says more. Click on that and you'll be able to scroll up to save chat. That is one way to, uh, to save the attachments. The other way again is to put your uh, email address in the, in the chat and I will send you the information along with um, the upcoming uh, events for the rest of February. Thank you very much. Hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. It is 2.30 unless someone else would like to say anything. Um, I, I just wanna thank everyone for their, uh, for their attendance uh, for sure and uh, for their patience <laughs> and on my part. I uh, apologize for any confusion that there might have been, but please know that the African American Genealogical Society welcomes your uh, uh, participation, membership, in order to get more hand-on-hand -hand experience and training. Uh, we do offer that and um, we have monthly meetings and we should make sure that that information is uh, provided in the chat as well. So that if you would like to get involved and get more hands-on assistance, we're more than happy to do that. And again, to the Allen County Public Library, thank you so very much, Mr. Witcher, for all of your continued support and encouragement and to the viewers for your uh, attendance in this program. Please know that you do have a mission make sure you continue on your trick to find out about those ancestors and to give them voice and color. Again, my name is Roberta Ridley, Allen County Public, uh, from the, not from the Allen County Public Library, from the African American Genealogical Society of Fort Wayne. And we welcome you. We so welcome you to join us so that we can assist you in your search as much as the Allen County Public Library. Thank you so very much, everybody.